how are we to fulfill the Great Commission? This is an important question for us as Christians. Uh, this uh, going, making disciples, baptizing, teaching. Is this to be done primarily through individual evangelizing and discipling? Now certainly it will not be done without individuals sharing the gospel and teaching others. But is that all there is to it? Us with sort of plane tickets and tracts and Bibles. Or is there anything else in these words? Well, if you look down at the text grammatically, there is one imperative in the statement. Uh, that's the imperative verb, make disciples. It's one word in Greek. And then there are three participles in this statement. The first is going. Going, it's often translated go, because this, particle, uh, this participle rather is the first word in the sentence. And it's before the imperative making disciples, so it has a special emphasis. So go, going, making disciples. So going, make disciples. At least Jesus is assuming that his disciples will be going to fulfill this command. Uh, more likely, he's even directing them to go. And where should they go? Well, he says, to all nations. Back in Matthew chapter 10, it's one of the five sort of teaching blocks in Matthew's gospel. Jesus had sent out his disciples, but only as his own mission was then to the lost sheep of the nation of Israel. Now, here at the end, after the resurrection, Jesus is exalted as Lord and judge of all the earth. He is risen with the authority of the Son of Man from Daniel 7, the authority of the Almighty. And his view is now extended, as it were, beyond Israel, as he's always intended, to all nations. And what this begins to point out to us then is this simple observation that the local church is the means God has given us to fulfill his commands. Churchless evangelism leaves the new convert unhelped and exposed.